All right. When one mole of each of the following is liquids is burned, which would produce the most energy? Now, this type of problem, what we're really looking at is the addition of O's and how the carbons actually affect it. Now, to actually see what's going on, we're going to look at a relatively simple combustion. We're just going to take some CH4 and react it with O. Now, I'm purposely leaving um, this kind of vague, and we're not going to balance it out. What I want to point out is that all these bonds on the uh, hydrocarbon and the o, o bond, all those would have to be broke. So we get all the energy from those being, or we'd have to put all the energy in there to get make all those break, but we get all these new bonds back. So there's a tremendous amount of energy we get back on this, which is why this is a very exothermic reaction. Because really, when we go about and balance this all out, we're going to see that we have a, 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 well, at least two of these. We'd be balanced more, something like, like so. All right. Now, what an oxygen does to this, though, it looks like we should actually get some energy or more energy because we're actually adding one more bond to it. But what, di what the difference is, that little bond there, that OH, well, it already exists over here in the products. So we don't get any energy. Um, we don't need to break that bond. We also don't get any energy back from it. So that lack of energy on uh, reforming the bonds is something that's going to actually really reduce the amount of energy we get on this. So what we find is um, the more and more O's you add, the less heat you actually produce. Uh, see the same thing in biology, um, fats which have um, very little oxygens by comparison to carbohydrates actually have more energy when they're actually burnt up. All right, so on this one, we actually know that these ones down here to the bottom with the oxygen actually would produce less energy than that top whole thing because they all have the same exact carbon, so C6, all six carbons. But then without oxygens would actually do give us more energy. And actually it turns out having more carbons is going to produce more carbon dioxide. So therefore we get a lot more energy back for each one of those carbons. So this one, on this problem, the one that gives us the most energy is simply the one that has the most carbons with the least amount of oxygens. So A is the answer.